So now let's talk about cores and how they are used in RetroArch. So basically, a core is a, in the sense of emulators, is the standalone emulator rewritten as a core to be used inside of RetroArch. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So if we open up RetroArch, and we go down to the online updater, you can now go into the core updater. And this is how you install the uh, download and install the different cores. Now cores aren't just emulators. They mostly are, but for example, you got 2048, which is a, uh, a standalone game for RetroArch, which I'll get into in a future video. Um, but then you start getting into the, uh, the emulator uh, stuff. So you got Arcade for Final Burn Alpha, different variations of it. MAME, different variations of that. A 20, Atari 2600 uses Stella. If you guys uh, ever played with the Stella uh, emulator, that's what is uh, that is. Um, for Nintendo, I mean, uh, let's see, Nintendo NES. Um, Nestopia. Nestopia was my uh, emulator of choice when it came to uh, emulating NES games. So this is basically that standalone Nestopia emulator working in RetroArch. And, um, but with so many cores to choose from, how do you know which is the one that you should choose? Uh, so again, I am going to refer you to the, uh, the docs. So let's open that up, and let's go to the docs. And from the from uh, from the docs, you can click on for users, core documentation, and I would go with the core combat compatibility. And I'm going to use Nintendo uh, as an example. So let's click on Nintendo NES. Now for Nintendo core compatibility, it tells you Nostopia. Uh, in the game of Skull and Crossbones, it has graphical glitches and screen shaking when in two-player mode. FCEUMM has pretty much the same uh, issue. Uh, BNES has some graphical glitches in Crisis Force. Uh, no enemies spawn and huge insect. So BeastNest has a couple extra issues. Uh, and in fact, Skull and Crossbones will not load at all and start. And then uh, Quick NES has a couple other uh, issues with games. Um, Skull and Crossbones, again, seems to be a difficult one to emulate on uh, all of them. But Nestopia seems like it's going to be the one to work. So then you can scroll down to Nintendo Cores, scroll down to the NES section, and here you go. You got BeastNAS, EmuX, FCEUM, Messen, Nestopia, Quick NES. So let's check out Nestopia and let's uh, read up on it. And find out if it's something that we want. Um, it tells us the extensions that uh, it accepts, uh, the database that's associated with it, and the important thing about the database, uh, which I'll get into in a later video, is when it comes to scanning your ROMs within RetroArch to create to automatically generate a playlist for you. Um, let's see, required or optional firmware files go on the system directory. When I get into actually setting up a core, I will go into all of this. But the important part here are the features. These are all the features that are implemented in the Nestopia core which is restart, screenshots, saves, rewind, net play, that's a big one for me. Uh, retro achievements is not supported. Uh, retro cheats, uh, controls, remapping, soft patching. Um, so when I'm looking at this, uh, retro achievements not being supported is kind of a big deal for me. 
Now, retro achievements is something that I'm going to go into in a later video as well. But just imagine you're playing a, a game on your PS3 or PS4 and you unlock trophies. Or you're playing a game on your Xbox and you're unlocking achievements. That's essentially what retro achievements are. Uh, it's basically uh, people that have uh, put achievements into your old school games. So to me, this is very important. So it looks like Nystopia may not be the one I'm looking for. So then what do I what do I do? Do I have to click on every single one and figure out, is that what I want? Well, that's what I'm going to refer you to this other website called nonmame.retrogames.com. Now, the, um, the goal of this website here is obviously it supports MAME. Um, but what it does is... For any system that it feels that MAME does not uh, emulate uh, accurately or uh, well enough to MAME according to their standards, and if you want to read all of this, it tells you how they uh, go about all that, um, then it's going to recommend it's, uh, what it thinks is the best outside of MAME. Um, so this is good, except for on games systems where it they feel that MAME is the best. For instance, uh, Driven to mature, Maturity. It says the following are non-arcade systems which MAME emulates as good as, if not better than, any other emulator according to our evaluation criteria. And one of them is Atari 2600. Uh, so it's not gonna it's not gonna mention anything for it because uh, it recommends MAME. Um, however, Stella was the only uh, only. Um, core uh, for it, so that's that's an easy one. But if you look down, you got Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, Genesis, um, they're going to say you should use MAME. However, I wouldn't recommend that in RetroArch, so uh, in that instance, you're just going to have to, for those specific systems, you're going to have to go through and, uh, so for a Game Boy, for example, do your own research. Click on each one, read the... Um, Read the uh, the features, find out if it's uh, if it has everything that you want on it, um, as well as uh, you know just experiment. I mean, you know the docs uh, have a lot of good information, um, and uh, yeah. So like for my instance, let's go back to Nintendo here. So I'm going to scroll down to Nintendo Entertainment System. And this one recommends the Messen Core, and it has all kinds of information it can tell you about it, and that's great. So it's recommending the Messen Core. So let's look at the Messen Core. So I'm gonna go back down to Messen, um, read all this stuff if you want, and again features. It accepts restart, screenshots, save, states, rewind, netplay. Netplay is important to me. And it uh, accepts, it supports retro achievements. Awesome. So Messen is the one for me. That's what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and reopen RetroArch. I'm going to go to Online Updater, Core Updater, and now I'm going to scroll down to Nintendo, Nintendo NES slash Famicom. For those of you who do not know, the Famicom is the Japanese version of the NES, or you should say the NES is the American version of the Famicom, since Famicom came out first. Um, but yeah, so now you go down, Nintendo NES Famicom Messen, I hit enter. And now it downloads that core. And to show you where it downloads, RetroArch Cores. And there it is. This is the core, Messen underscore Libretro dot DLL. And as you can see, it's not that big of a file, just about 3 meg. So now, I go back into here. If I want to load the core. I go load core. I'm sorry, load core. And the only one I have installed is uh, Messen. So I click on that. And as you can see on the bottom left of my screen, it now says Messen 0.9.7. And then from here, there's other stuff I can do, which I'll get into a later um, 
a later uh, video. Um, but uh, let's see, I can view the core information. It tells me about Messin. Uh, it tells me uh, what's missing. Uh, missing uh, disks.rom, which is the Famicom BIOS. Um, and it tells me some other stuff. HD packs, if I want to use them, go there. Custom palettes, uh, stuff like that. And then if I wanted to delete a core, uh, so let's say I downloaded three different NES cores to test them out and I didn't like them. Uh, then you can go into this informa uh, the core information, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and click delete core, and it'll delete it. This way you don't have to go messing around in your uh, RetroArch folder and, de and deleting things that you may or may not know what you want to uh, delete. Um, so with that, I'm going to end here. I just wanted to quickly go over how I choose which uh, core is the best which again is uh, looking at the Libretro docs and non-MAME. Um, next video, I will go into actually uh, setting up uh, Messin and uh, eventually we will actually play a game. I'm sure you're all excited about that. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.